Sonic the Hedgehog is an alien. And there is sufficient evidence to prove it. Substantiate it, whatever, semantics. No, I, I know that sounds crazy. It's real, it's, it's real. It's not, a consp it's not a stupid conspiracy theory. I'm not talking about the movie. I'm not talking about Mobius. I'm not talking about the two worlds thing that, that Izuka talks about with all the modern games. No, this is, it's bigger, it's older, it's been there since the first game right in front of our eyes and nobody has noticed it. It's better if I show you. To get started, let's lay some groundwork. Simply put, this theory only applies to the games up to and including Sonic Adventure 2. After SA2, the original Sonic team largely disbanded and the series' writing was in new hands. As a result, much of what I'm going to talk about in this video was retconned in later games. So don't come at me like, but in Sonic Heroes and in Sonic Unleashed, no. It's only games before and including Sonic Adventure 2, okay? Just those. In Sonic 1, we meet both Sonic and Dr. Eggman, the evil scientist bent on taking over South Island and subsequently the world. He's after the Chaos Emeralds and has been capturing innocent animals to use as live batteries for his army of evil machines. Sonic is the only one who can fight against him. Now there's something interesting here. According to the Japanese manual, Eggman isn't just after the Emeralds, okay? More importantly, he's after Sonic. This isn't really mentioned as such in any of the rest of the series, but we see the theme cropping up over and over in the form of Eggman creating pseudo-Sonics that can never quite hold a candle to the real thing. So the question is, why is he after Sonic? Believe it or not, we actually get our answer to this in the next game. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 introduces the seventh Chaos Emerald, as well as the obvious Super Saiyan reference that is Super Sonic. Now this is important, actually. We now know that not only is Sonic collecting the Chaos Emeralds, he's able to use them to achieve a super-powered form. Remember this. We are coming back to this. Next up, Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles. Now this is really where it gets going. Enter Knuckles. We learn that he's the guardian of the Master Emerald, the battery that channels the power of the Chaos Emeralds and keeps Angel Island afloat. But there's more, right? There's a story in the environment of the game and it's never openly explained. The mural. The hedgehog statues in Hydro City. Evidence of advanced technology worked into the level design of Hidden Palace Zone warp pads on and around Angel Island? We're familiar with the stories of cities like Atlantis and Laputa, and sci-fi has for ages adored the notion of ancient aliens being responsible for the pyramids and phenomenal mathematical brilliance of the Mayas. It's basically a given that anytime you see an ancient culture in a story that involves sci-fi elements, aliens are gonna be just around the corner. But there's more. If it was just about the tropes, then we we'd be saying that Knuckles is the alien here. But that's not what the evidence suggests. Sonic 1's South Island is called a treasure trove in the Japanese manual, not just because of the Chaos Emeralds located on it, but because of its various ancient relics. Relics that, like those on Angel Island, are Greco-Roman in style. Sonic 2, West Side Island, Aquatic Ruin Zone, same thing. It's certainly a far cry from what we'd call echidna architecture. It's early South American design versus highly advanced futuristic teleportation tech with Greco-Roman leanings. These were two very different cultures and aesthetics here. Whoever built this, namely the Echidnas of the Knuckles clan, most certainly did not build this. So there's more going on here. And the key to learning it is an ancient Echidna history. The legend of the Chaos Tragedy, as we shall call it, is basically your archetypical flood story, but with Dragon Ball. According to the Sonic Adventure Japanese strategy guide, the Echidna of the Knuckles clan were once peaceful. Led by their matriarch, they protected the Chaos Emeralds and their shrine from outsiders and behaved according to the legend passed down. The servers are the seven Chaos. Chaos is power, power enriched by the heart. The controller is the one that unifies the Chaos. Upon her death, however, the matriarch's son, Pachakamak, led the tribe on a warpath, and in his greed, he tried to steal the Chaos Emeralds for his own power. True to the legend, the power enriched by his heart was rage and corruption, which caused the ancient Chao water spirit, Chaos, to likewise become enraged and level the entire civilization. Tikal, seeing no other way to pacify the angry god, sealed it, along with herself, into the Master Emerald, the conduit for the Chaos Emerald's power. The legend goes on to say that the survivors of the clan re-enshrined the Emeralds upon a floating island, and dedicated themselves to protecting them so that such a tragedy could never happen again. Had Pachakamak harbored good intentions, so too would the power of Chaos at his command, and indeed, this is exactly what Sonic harnesses when he turns into Super Sonic.
The record of this tragedy is inscribed in a mural on the walls deep within the Mystic Ruins. The Knuckles clan did not know much about the Emeralds at all. If they did, they'd have known about its guardian deity, Chaos, and probably wouldn't have been likely to provoke him. So they couldn't be the origin of all his advanced technology based around Chaos energy. Somebody else had to make it. So let's apply our knowledge of alien tropes in sci-fi to this. The environments of the game suggest that some futuristic race of creatures that we never get to see in action is responsible for the future futuristic technology that we see on Angel Island. According to sci-fi tropes, it's likely for this to be a race of aliens. No records of the race remain, and we must draw our conclusions based solely on cultural contradictions in the environment and no evidence that suggests that they're nature. And wait a minute. We are shown who these ancient aliens were. The Knuckles clan had no reason to be sculpting hedgehogs, much less in a style that reflected what they actually looked like. They were busy sculpting echidnas in their own Maya-influenced cultural style. In the Sonic world, to sculpt a creature as it really looked would be equivalent to Renaissance artists sculpting the human form. And we certainly know the ancient culture liked Greco-Roman-styled things, so naturally, whoever sculpted these must have known exactly what hedgehogs in this world looked like. It was an alien race of hedgehogs like creatures that brought the unexplained Chaos Emeralds to this world, and it was them who created the technology that harnesses it, including the hovercraft fueled by Chaos Energy that is Angel Island. It was this alien culture which also brought the mysterious Chow to this world, a species so intrinsically linked to Chaos Energy that it's how they evolve, and it's how they're able to grow and imitate other creatures by adopting their appearances. And if you want to go a step further, maybe Chow are merely the infants of the species, and Sonic is simply a highly evolved speed type Chow. It would certainly explain a lot, like why Sonic and Perfect Chaos are both able to use the powers of the Chaos Emeralds to attain godlike super forms. Sonic has such mastery over Chaos Energy that he beats God. In the Japanese manual for Sonic 3, Sonic discovers a ring washed ashore with ancient runes inscribed upon it, and he's reminded of a story he heard once about an angel island floating in the sky, and he's filled with an inexplicable nostalgia. Sonic is tied to the Chaos Emeralds and the mystery surrounding them. Whether he's aware of it or not, he's continuously drawn to them and successfully collects them in every game to use to achieve an incredible level of power. Now you could stop me here and say, but wait! Knuckles, Tails, and Shadow can all go super with the Emeralds, and you'd be right, they all do go super. But Sonic is the only one who can do it in any lasting sense. Outside of the special Sonic and Knuckles docking cartridge, neither Tails nor Knuckles is able to go super more than once. And Shadow dies as a result of trying to use it for too long. I know he comes back in later games, okay, I know, I know. But this is, again, talking only about games up to and including Sonic Adventure 2. And Shadow was written to die at the end of that game. Okay? He's dead. Sonic is the only one who's able to use the Chaos Emeralds to achieve a super form more than once. He's even able to go into multiple super forms depending on the canonicity of the Super Emeralds. Eggman is after Sonic for this power. He wants to harness it. He's been practicing with animal-powered machines. He keeps trying to replicate Sonic's power with creations like Metal Sonic and Mecha Sonic. When that doesn't work, he tries to harness the power of another creature that can do it. Chaos. Then finally, he goes for the experiment mentioned in his grandfather's studies, Project Shadow. In Sonic Adventure 2, Rouge points out the contradiction between Shadow the Hedgehog and Project Shadow. There were two prototypes, the Bio-Lizard and what we the players know as Shadow the Hedgehog. The only consistency between them is the ability to use Chaos Control. Now logically speaking, that means this ability must have been Gerald Robotnik's only qualifying factor for Ultimate Life Form. So why he start with a big lizard, then go to a tiny hedgehog? Look at the structure of the Emerald's pedestals in the Space Colony arc. It's pretty obvious Gerald did his research. Gerald based his first prototype, the Bio-Lizard, on the Echidna's depiction of perfect chaos. When that didn't work, he studied further and discovered the existence of Angel Island, the Prophecy Mural. This is it! This is what he was truly after in his research of the ultimate life form. Gerald based his second prototype on this bizarre little hedgehog he kept seeing depicted around Angel Island, which by its very nature was obviously closely linked with the inexorable truth of the Chaos Emeralds. Shadow doesn't just look like Sonic, he's based on Sonic. Sonic the Hedgehog 
is the real, ultimate life form. Shadow will even admit this to Sonic himself if you take long enough in the final hazard fight. Sonic, I think I've discovered what the ultimate life form is. It might be you. But it goes deeper. Shadow isn't even who he claims to be. None of Shadow's memories are actually his. Remember, Rouge calls him out on this, toting her copy of the original Project Shadow Files as she does so. But what she doesn't reveal is that she's done much more research than she's letting on. I've contacted a specialist, a mole agent, who's discovered some of Rouge's top secret documents found deep within the Sonic Adventure 2 Perfect Guide. Here's some of the footage I received from Deep Throat, Mr. X, Venetian merchant, regarding this frankly disturbing discovery. Venetian merchant checking in. Chaser's hot tip is looking better and better. From Rouge's own report on Gunn's raid of Colony Ark, the real goal was none other than to shut down the Ark, erase Project Shadow, and detain Professor Gerald as the person responsible for the disaster. The operation was carried out on an unprecedented scale, the likes of which had not been seen since the founding of Gunn. The operation was completed by sealing the Ultimate Life Form's prototype deep within the colony. However, there was just one miscalculation during this operation's execution. Professor Gerald seemed to have already completed the Ultimate Life Form Shadow using a different base model. When gun special forces entered the laboratory, the fleeing Gerald entrusted Shadow to his granddaughter Maria and made sure that one escape capsule was ejected towards the surface. The whereabouts of said capsule remain unknown. Do you understand what this is saying? Shadow wasn't the one who fled Ark in an escape pod. Those aren't his mi- Looks like my flight just got bumped. Free. To be continued. What do you think you're doing? Get that- Our agent's brave investigation has given us a vital clue. The escape pod was never discovered. It couldn't have been Shadow the Hedgehog in there. Shadow the Hedgehog was found after 50 years of cryogenic sleep at a gun high security facility. So the question remains, who was in the escape pod. Whose memories did Dr. Gerald Robotnik place into Shadow the Hedgehog? It has to be the only other person who knows the very last words Shadow heard from Maria. It was Sonic. Sonic doesn't clearly remember his time aboard the Space Colony Ark. It's no surprise, considering his last experience aboard it would have been traumatizing, and it would have been followed by a massive impact when his escape pod landed on Earth. But these memories start to bubble to the surface when history begins to repeat itself. Like when he's once again on a pod, rocketing towards Earth, Sonic somehow knows how to use chaos control with a fake emerald, despite claiming he's never done it before. He even knows the appropriate way to say goodbye to Shadow, using a very specific word choice that he wouldn't have known to use without having heard it himself. Sonic lived aboard the Ark at some point, with Gerald and Maria Robotnik, likely when Gerald was studying him in his research on ultimate life. Maria's love for the Earth and all its people deeply impacted him, and instilled in him the same love for the planet that's as cool and blue as him. Gerald would later use Sonic's memories and the notes he took on him to create Shadow the Hedgehog, an imperfect replica of the ultimate life form under Gun's supervision and would program Shadow to enact his revenge for Maria being taken away from him. Sonic the Hedgehog is the real ultimate life form. As I mentioned earlier, only Sonic is able to handle chaos energy to maintain a super form continuously. Sonic is fine at the end of the final hazard fight, but the exertion is too much for Shadow to handle. He's exhausted, he's panting throughout the entire fight, and Sonic is continuously asking if he's okay. And at the end of it all, Shadow dies. In summary, Sonic, the last descendant of an ancient race of alien hedgehog-like creatures, is uniquely able to control chaos energy in a way and to a capacity that no other character in the games is capable of. Dr. Robotnik needs Sonic along with the Chaos Emeralds in order to achieve his plans of world domination, because Sonic is the only being who can truly harness the energy of the Emeralds without it killing him. And when he can't capture Sonic, he turns to alternative methods. Metal Sonic, Silver Sonic, Mecha Sonic, Chaos, Shadow the Hedgehog, and none of these can quite match up to the sheer power and prowess of controlling chaos energy that Sonic possesses. And Sonic doesn't even know it. Sonic has no idea he's an alien stranded on Earth. He doesn't remember there being anybody he's ever relied on. He doesn't know why he can turn blonde and super. He doesn't know why he's able to use the power of these seven mystical artifacts. Sonic the Hedgehog is Goku. 